Second national championship. Deja was the most outstanding player as a freshman when they won it two years ago. And the Ducks in the green jerseys, with that fast tempo, Karch, they get the first point. You're right. One hitter on zero blockers, already a blown assignment for Penn State. Well, as Marie alluded to, there may be a learning curve here early in the match for Penn State, trying to adjust to the speed. McClendon trying to bring some power, dug up by Plum, the tip by Bergsma. Ariel Scott, the Big Ten Player of the Year. Bumped out to Cat Fisher, misses it wide, point hit the Lions. McClendon, the junior, over a thousand kills. They played here back in the early part of the season in late August, and McClendon's jersey was retired at the local high school. And Penn State actually practiced over there at Manual earlier this week to prepare for this semi. Here is McClendon with the swing out of the back. Plum, the back set, Bergsma through the block, with the right out Hancock. Jacob bumps it to Brenner. McClendon tips it, Bergsma covers. Fisher down the line, point Penn State. This is a Penn State team that has been hitting extremely well in the postseason. They do not have a senior playing significant minutes for them. But they also have the only players left in the tournament that have a championship ring. And a misfire on that set point, Oregon. Substitution for Oregon, and this is their rotation where they play without the Libro, the defensive specialist in the opposite colored jersey. They'll bring on the setter here, the server here, Kelly Kawasaki. And a big hit in the middle for Nia Grant, the sophomore out of Warren, Ohio. She will promptly check out. Katie Slay will replace her up front as Dominique Gonzalez, the sophomore from San Antonio, will serve. She had 20 digs in their regional final win against Minnesota. Megan Courtney, the freshman, in her first swing is a nervous one. Point Oregon. And a smile from Courtney. Seen a few nervous swings here. Both teams trying to figure out where the open space is. Lots of good defense, not easy kills. Scott has it blocked. Quick to slay, good get by Jacob. She is a defensive whiz for Oregon. And we saw that in their regional win in Omaha as Scott gets the kill. Scott will retire to the bench. Lacey Fuller. Serves it at Cat Fisher, and Fisher gets the set and gets blocked. One thing Coach Rose talks about is he doesn't worry about having small blockers. He just doesn't want to have bad blockers. And so he feels like Hancock is one of the two most improved players over last season, McClendon being the other in terms of getting all of the parts of their game. Lots of improvement. Megan Courtney wins the joust at the net. The Big Ten Freshman of the Year, the fourth rated recruit in the country coming out of high school last year. There's the slide play that Oregon loves to run for Williams and denied by Penn State. Well, Oregon fooled Penn State on the very first play of the game, but look, Slay is all over that. Number 16, the middle blocker for Penn State, camping out, setting up the 10 to block that. Was tied at three, then Penn State scored four in a row early in the semis. 
Back here at the national semifinals, Penn State two wins away from a sixth national championship, which would tie Stanford for the most in college volleyball history. Russ Rose, the winningest coach in terms of championships in the game with five titles. And this is the 10th trip for Russ to the national semis with Penn State. They're a little bit different for the Ducks. Sweeps of Northern Colorado, Dayton, and then BYU for the first time getting to the Elite Eight, and then a win over Nebraska for the first time getting to the National Semis. Off the block and out, Point Oregon. Uh, Maria's got a report from the old Oregon huddle for us. Yeah, Jim Moore was telling his setter, Lauren Plum, that she can use the pipe with Bergsma if she needs it, and also that they're going to always send two blockers to Williams. And they're also going to try and get to on Elena when she is in the front row. So he told her to spread the ball out a little bit more and continue to keep this fast tempo as well. Thank you, Maria. It really is, Kirk, an offense that is unorthodox. You don't see many, if any, running this kind of tempo as fast as Oregon does. And they'll run different hitters to different places, different routes on the court. Unusual in college volleyball. And the other thing that's unusual is the setter will call the first play, but after that, they're all call, barking out the signals, looking at where the defense is, just like a wide receiver or receiver in football in a West Coast offense might look for the space yeah. and react accordingly, and the quarterback and the attacker have to be on the same page, just like the Oregon offense. He's only got one rule. Don't run into anybody else. Other than that, <laughs> figure it out. And it takes a certain uh, game IQ to do that. The tip up and over. Looked like it might have been missed time, but Kanae Finley able to hang up there for it. She did hang up there, and that's the risk of that offense, is if you're talking about it as you're trying to run it, they look like they weren't quite on the same page in that rally. Nice pass. Wow. Oh, Slay with the finish. All the credit goes to number 17, Megan Courtney, scrambling just to get here and put it right on the money. Then a nicely placed set by number 12, the setter, Micah Hancock. Penn State says, we've got a little speed too here, stepping on the accelerator. Setting outside the Brenner. Beats the block, Point Oregon for Liz Brenner, the three sports star who's about to add a fourth. She's gonna run track next spring instead of playing softball. She will join the basketball team at the end of December. And don't forget the World Youth Racquetball yes, Championship. Yes, how can we forget? <laughs> the only thing she can't do, she said, is soccer because she hates running. <laughs> so that rules out the heptathlon. Yeah, yeah. She, she might have a choice of what to do at the Olympics, as but it will it not be the heptathlon. There's Micah Hancock. Yeah, watch as she's serving at you. It tends to tail as you're receiving the serve from right to left, a left-handed curveball. And that's huge right there for Oregon because Hancock is probably the best setter here and she will be limited to one. Yep, that, her serve scores more points than any other player on the uh, on the Penn State team. That's why they've already gotten her two chances at the service line, but she hasn't been able to score yet. Big swing from Elena Bergsma, the fifth-year senior from Chandler, Arizona, who has had a touch of the flu the last couple of days. Looking strong there. Which is just the recipe for a great game, says Michael Jordan, right? Yeah. The Utah Jazz know all about that one. And a kill at the net by Kat Fisher, the senior from Los Altos, California. Told time and time again in her career that she wasn't good enough to play at this level. And the great team seemed to have that one player that figures out how to be invaluable to her team and how to make sure that the coach can't take her out. And that's what Fisher's been able to do. Oregon a 6-2 run here to even it up. And they have Fisher blocking the middle right now because they're trying to focus on Ariel Scott. She hasn't done a lot of that this season. They're sending their mi middle blocker, their biggest blocker, Kanae Finley who happens to be six foot two, a little higher, uh, taller than Fisher, out on the best Penn State hitter. Scott is six inches taller than Fisher. The back set burns muff through the Penn State block. Well, 
Davis got three kills early on. That 12th player of the year, she was fifth in the country in kills. Out of the Phoenix area, grew up watching Arizona legend Kim Glass as a youngster. McClendon out of the back. Right down Main Street. Well, watch how the middle of this, it's like the parting of the Red Sea here. Nobody's blocking everybody for Oregon. Just ignored the back row attack of Deja McClendon. Probably don't want to do that much tonight. Service error from Gonzalez. Back to square. Berkman serves it at Deja. This is Ariel Scott straight down through the floor. And that's a good matchup. Penn State likes that. Scott at 6-4, hitting against Fisher at 5-10. Two rotations. We talked about it in the first semifinal, Texas changing its matchups. Penn State has the matchup that it wants in this first set. Big swing by Fisher, and that's what Oregon wants to do, hitting over the center Hancock, the shortest one out there. That's going to help, for sure, help Fisher on offense. But Penn State's primary concern is how do we get stops on Oregon's fast offense? Courtney off speed for the kill. Point Penn State. Nittany Lions coming in at 33 and 2. Their only losses, interestingly enough, for Oregon fans, Oregon State, which Oregon beat twice, swept them, and then at Nebraska. And Russ Rose said, hey, Oregon immediately caught our attention because they won last weekend at Nebraska, and we did not win in Husker country. Only one team before that was able to do it, Ohio State in Big Ten play. Point Oregon. A team that has been slowly building under the direction of Jim Moore. And really prior to the win last week against Nebraska, their signature victory was against Penn State last fall when they went into Happy Valley and ended the NCAA record 94 match winning streak at home for PSU. Bergsma right at Courtney. Quick to McClendon. Got it. 